It's official. As Katie has always suspected, I am certifiable. And by that, I mean I am a certified pilot. And by that, I mean I am a certified remote pilot. Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Scott. And a couple years ago, we gave up our single parent lifestyle when we fell in love, got married, and had a baby. And now while most of our friends are celebrating empty nests, we're starting over, but this time we'll be older and wiser. Hopefully. Hopefully. So how do I get my remote pilot certification, you ask? Well, I'm glad that you did because I'm going to tell you. In this video, I'm going to talk to you through how to go about studying for the test, where to go register for the test, um, how to get yourself prepared for the test, and ideas on what to expect. Um, this isn't a study guide, but I will link you to quite a few of those along the way, as well as a whole bunch of practice tests that I think really help. So all the rules and regulations I talk about, all the policies and procedures are valid as of early 2020. Uh, as the government goes, things are absolutely subject to change. So please double check, especially if you're watching this video far into the future. So what do you need to do if you want to get certified? What does that even mean? Um, basically, it means that you are allowed to operate your drone for commercial purposes. So that could be things like um, real estate photography, um, maybe land surveying, maybe you're doing tower inspections, roof inspections. Things like that are pretty common um, uses for a drone, especially for, for people that are kind of doing it freelance or on the side. Where do you start? Well, I'll tell you, there are a ton of um, online schools, training courses, and, and other paid services to help you pass the test. Um, and I say to help you pass the test, I don't mean that they, they kind of feed you the questions. They teach you the information that you need to know and they offer more of a structured, guided pace for learning that information, hit a lot of the target points, and um, the other benefit is that they'll, they'll stay up to date with the regulations as they change and as they, um, um, as they change questions out or put more emphasis on certain things. So you definitely get your money's worth through those paid courses. But if you want to try and do it on your own, you can study and pass the test, study for and pass the test without spending any extra money. So the first two resources that I used were YouTube videos. Um, I'll link those below. And basically they went through, um, the, the people putting on these YouTube videos went through um, a ton of sample questions that you would find on the certification test and answered them and then explained why the answer was correct. I found that approach very helpful because there is so much information to learn out there and you don't really know where to start. So if you don't have somebody guiding you through it, it can be very daunting. Um, so having the, the people in the YouTube videos go through all the different questions and um, give you the answers and explain the answers, which is the important part, then it really helped me learn. Now let me be very clear about this. They are not giving you the answers that are on the test. You may find some similar questions on the test, but they're not the identical ones. They are going to be different, but the concepts that you learn are going to be applied there um, when, you're, when you're taking the test. And there's a lot of different information on the test, things that I would have never considered as a drone pilot. Um, of course, you've got your, your regulations, um, and then you've also got this whole system that the FAA has put together. Um, you've got the, the PAVE and the CARE and the risk analysis and all sorts of, of programs that they want you to know about on how to conduct safe flight operations with yourself, your drone, and your crew. So you have to understand those acronyms and what the FAA wants you to take away from those. Um, you also have to understand a lot of meteorological terms and not only terms, but also how weather affects, um, you know, your drone, the air flying conditions and how weather acts upon itself. So you have to understand how convection works. You have to understand how fog is formed. You have to understand what lenticular clouds are. I didn't know what they were and I'm kind of a weather nerd. So 
there's a lot of information out there that you've got to, got to take in. You're also going to have to learn a lot of uh, pilot lingo and how to read um, sectional charts, understand um, control tower frequencies and these weather reports, these specialized weather reports that just look like a jumbled mess of, I don't even know. But there's, again, there's a pattern and there's a method to it. And if you figure it out, you can read them. One of the most important things that you're gonna have to really nail down in your head is airspaces. I can't stress that enough. There are so many questions about airspace on this test. You really have to understand what the different airspaces are. You have to know what class A airspace is, class B, C, D, E, and G. You also need to understand the floor and the ceiling for each of those airspaces and how they actually look. They're often described as an upside down wedding cake. Um, so you, you really do need to understand that. There's a lot of questions on the test about airspace um, and many of those aren't just, you know, hey, refer to this sectional chart and tell me what the ceiling of this airspace is over this airport. It's more about um, traditionally class C airspace starts at how many feet, you know, and then you have to choose is it AGL or MSL? Well, so AGL is above ground level or MSL is sea level, uh, you know, feet above sea level. So you have to really do remember those things. But the thing that really blew me away as far as knowledge for a drone pilot was the um, learning about flight patterns and runways. Don't get me wrong, it was actually very interesting to learn about why runways are numbered the way they are. There's, a, there's totally a pattern to it and, and a, a logic to it. But to learn about that and traffic patterns and um, runway symbols and, and all that kind of stuff I thought I would never have to learn. Why would I need to know that? Especially as a drone pilot. I'm not landing my Mavic, you know, on the tarmac out there, but they still want you to know it. And it's important, I think, because when you are operating near an airport as a commercial UAS pilot, you, you very well could be, you need to understand traffic patterns because you need to understand the flow of the aircraft around you and how to avoid them and not cause an accident. So these, these YouTube videos with all the questions we'll go through and really help you out. And then after that, after you've absorbed the information, taken your notes, go and take practice tests. There are several practice tests. I'm gonna link three or four down below. And just go through and keep working through them. You know, you're going to miss them. You know, I, I'm usually a very good test taker. I go through and I, I ran through, you know, these 10 question chunks of a test. And I'd be like, four out of 10, right? What? And you'd go back and, and the way they word things is, is kind of tricky. Um, you have to really pay attention. You can't fly through these questions. You gotta pay attention and think about what they're really asking you. And you'll eventually see which sections you are very weak on. For me, it was um, the airport signage and um, traffic patterns. I don't know what it was about traffic patterns. I just couldn't get it in my head. So I went and I spent extra time. I found other resources so that I could sit and research that. Um, there were also certain weather events and things that, that just I didn't quite get. So um, I was able to research those out on their own. And that's what those practice tests are great for, is to identify the areas that you're consistently weak in. And then you go and you study those. You go back until you're consistently hitting, um, you know, high 80%, 90% on these practice quizzes. And there's one of those below. It's the King School one that is, I'll say, hard. Right? They're, they're, they're more difficult, more involved questions, and honestly more representative of what you're actually gonna see on that test. So make that, once you are comfortable, and once you're kind of easing through these other questions and these other tests, especially if you have kind of inadvertently memorized them, go to that King one, because um, not only do they randomize those questions, they've got a pretty big pool of them, you can say how many questions you want, up to 60, you can also tell it to only focus on certain sections. So if you're really struggling with a couple things, like you've got, you know, you can read latitude and longitude like that, and you know your sectional charts, but the weather terms and traffic patterns are just boggling you, you can just focus on those questions. So there is a lot to learn, but it is learnable. I did it in about eight days, um, and, and not eight days straight. It was in my spare time, in the evenings, in between cutting videos and spending time with the family, um, so it's doable, but I was also dedicated to it. I mean, that was 
my main focus. When I wasn't doing something that had to be done, um, I was studying for that test because I wanted to get it out of the way. I was afraid that, that if I let it linger for too long, I would just never get around to doing it because this is something that I've been meaning to do for almost two years now. Now, you've studied for the test, you've, you're ready to go. What's the next step? This is where I found kind of a lack of information out there. Um, and, and things have changed. So as of mid-January 2020, you now have to register on this ICARA website with the FAA and get a special identification number through the FAA. It's like a pilot, um, it's basically your pilot identification number. And you have to provide that to the testing facility. And what that does is it's basically like your social security number. It links all your information together through these FAA systems and the pilot testing centers and all that. So you have to first go and register and get that. And then you have to go to the FAA website, find a um, authorized test center, schedule your test, pay for it. It's $160. Um, and then, then show up. When you show up at the facility, um, a lot of them are, are at airports, um, or at least around here where. So you show up at the facility and you, you have to have a photo ID with your name, date of birth, and address, valid address, all on it. Valid and current, I should say, um, on it. If you don't have that, so usually your, your state driver's license or state ID is fine. Um, I was gonna use my passport card, but it didn't have my address on it. So um, if you don't have your address, there are other, on, on your identification, there are other forms. Um, also, if you're not a U.S. citizen, there are other forms of identification that you'll need to bring. So I'll put the link below to that, um, to that matrix that they've got on, on all the different documentation. Um, now, it does kind of make it sound like you have to bring, you know, like utility bills and things like that, but that's only for special circumstances. All I had to do was show them my state driver's license. You are not allowed to bring pretty much anything into the test center. Um, so on the website, it, it, I mean, it's very strict. It's like not even your wallet and this and that. Um, I didn't find that to be true, but definitely um, cell phones, recording devices, um, smartwatch, all that kind of stuff had to be left. And they didn't have any place to securely store that at the test facility, so I had to go lock it up in the truck. Um, they give you a pencil. They give you, um, I, actually, I got two pencils. I got sheets of paper. I could get a calculator that they'll give you. And they do give you the book um, that's got all the sectional charts in it, all the diagrams and, and things that you reference. When you go through the test, you'll see, it'll say refer to section blah, 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 refer to figure 12. It has all that stuff in there, plus the, the little legend that tells you what everything is. So, um, you know, you can see the markers for what class A airspace is and class B airspace and things like that. Um, and that helps jog your memory. So hopefully I've helped you out. If I've missed anything, please comment below so that other people watching this video will be able to, to see that. Um, I'll make corrections in the video description as necessary. Check out some of our other videos. Really appreciate you watching. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if we were helpful for you. And hopefully we'll see you out there in the air. Safe flying.